don't have a big nozzle, we could obviously stretch that. Hey, this is Warren Redlich. I'm going to show you in this video how SpaceX is going to take Starship, stretch the tanks, and enable Starship to penetrate deeper into virgin space. So you can really go, go far with that ship. We're going to talk about orbital Starship, but most of this video will be about long-range exploratory missions, missions where Starship will not be taking off from Earth or landing back on Earth. If you want to go far, you put less cargo on, obviously. Like, if you want to go really far, you just go, like, maybe you have, like, an 80-ton ship and uh, 40 tons of cargo or something like that. Um, and, and then stretch the tanks to uh, maybe 2,000 tons per pound. And you, then you, you can easily go to the surface of Mars and the surface of the moon and back. You know, no that change of mission will allow changes in how Starship is designed to reduce weight and to enable more cargo or more fuel depending on how far Starship wants to go. To explain, we need to start with orbital Starship, Starship that starts on Earth and launches into space. What you can see here is it starts on the Super Heavy booster, which has 28 engines, sea level optimized engines because it's launching from sea level, the way rockets work changes in space. The rocket booster is mostly at low levels, close to Earth, so sea level optimized engines are appropriate for the super heavy booster. On the Starship, for the orbital rocket, we're going to see some sea level optimized engines in the center. The sea level engines at the center of Starship will allow gimbling, which allows it to maneuver better for landing back on Earth. It's also going to have vacuum optimized engines that allow it to be more efficient when it's traveling outside Earth's atmosphere. When it's inside Earth's atmosphere, the pressure of the atmosphere forces the exhaust from the rocket into more of a straight line. Once it goes out into a vacuum, that pressure is gone and you need a change in the bell. You need to make the bell of the rocket much larger. You need a big nozzle that helps direct the flow to get more force on the ship going straight in the direction you want to go. If you don't have the right kind of nozzle on your vacuum optimized engine, you don't get as efficient thrust. So that's what orbital Starship looks like. So now let's talk about Starship that doesn't land on Earth, it doesn't spend any time in Earth's atmosphere. Since these versions of Starship will not need sea level optimized engines. You'll only have vacuum optimized engines on that Starship. The most basic variant of a Starship that's not coming back would be to replace the two sea level engines that were in the center with one vacuum optimized engine in the center in its place. That gives you five vacuum optimized engines so you get the most efficient and largest thrust for Starship while I was making this video, it occurred to me that some people might not understand fully the difference between sea level optimized engines and vacuum optimized engines. When you first see a rocket launching from ground level and you look at the exhaust from the rocket, the, the flames shooting out down from the rocket, it looks like a straight line. It shoots straight out, straight down. That's very efficient and it makes the thrust push the rocket up more efficiently. When you look later in a launch, as the rocket gets higher and higher, the plume spreads out. And when it gets up into space, the sp plume spreads out a lot. And that means that the thrust of the rocket is used less efficiently. Instead of the gas is going straight down and pushing the rocket straight up or straight behind the rocket so the rocket can go faster, the plume tends to spread out. And that means that the thrust is used less efficiently. Switching to vacuum optimized nozzles means that thrust again by the shape of the nozzle changing and the design of the engine changing the the thrust is more efficient because the the, the propellants that are being expelled out the back of the rocket are being pushed more in a straight line in the vacuum in space anywhere outside of earth that includes mars that includes the moon anywhere that doesn't have an atmosphere or missions where Starship will still be landing on something like the Moon or Mars, 
Starship would still need legs. It no longer needs fins. When you see fins on Starship, when you see uh, the titanium grid fins on Falcon 9, those, or f those are for the descent through a significant atmosphere to allow Starship, to allow the rocket to control its descent and change direction. On the moon, there's no atmosphere. On the Mars, there's a very, very thin atmosphere, not much at all. So there's not much reason to have any aerodynamic manipulative devices like fins on the exterior of Starship for any of these things. For landing, they still need legs. So in this diagram that I have of the first Starship vacuum version that would land on the moon or Mars, you see six legs, which provide some stability. You can also imagine versions of Starship that are never going to land on anything. And that's where you get this concept of Starship Explorer that I have here. You can, whatever you do in terms of engines, you can take off the landing legs and you basically just have a cylinder. You, on other rockets, you don't even need a nose cone. And it's not clear whether Starship on these missions would bother having a nose cone since there's no atmosphere that it needs to protect the payload from. It may be built in that it has a nose cone anyway for Starship. So for the first version that I've proposed here, other than the regular Starship vacuum, vacuum Starship Explorer has three vacuum optimized engines. The advantage here is that you reduce weight. You, uh, you, you get rid of the extra two Raptor engines and that saves weight. One of the critical things in having Starship perform longer range missions to go deeper into virgin space, to do those longer range missions, weight, mass is the enemy in the tyranny of the rocket equation. In order to go farther, you, the, the mass of the fuel is used to propel the mass of the ship and what's in it. The more mass you have in the ship and the more mass that the ship is, the harder it is for the fuel that's being used to push it as far as you want to go. You get the delta V you need to get to further distances, to, to more distant destinations. With the first Starship vacuum concept, Elon has said that if you reduce the size of the payload, and you increase the amount of fuel, you stretch the tanks. We're gonna talk about stretching the tanks more in a minute. If you wanna go far, you put less cargo on, obviously. Like, if you wanna go really far, you just go like, maybe you have like an 80, 80 ton ship and uh, 40 tons of cargo or something like that. Um, and, and then stretch the tanks, uh, maybe 2,000 tons per pound. And you, then you, you can easily go to the surface of Mars and the surface of the moon and back. Then Starship might be able to fly from low Earth orbit all the way to Mars or the moon and back without having to refuel. It's important to note this version of Starship would be able to get to the moon or Mars and come back to low Earth orbit, but because we've gotten rid of the fins and the sea level engines, it would not be able to land on Earth. It would get back to Earth orbit and maybe the passengers would change to another ship in order to come back. This is one theory about how a Moon or Mars mission would go and come back. But we can take it a step further. The version I suggested before had three vacuum optimized engines. You could also imagine a version with two or one vacuum optimized engines. The advantage of this is reducing mass of the ship. Every Raptor engine on the ship adds about five tons, roughly. So if you can get rid of a Raptor, you're saving tons. You lose the ability to accelerate quickly when you reduce the number of engines. But if you're not reducing the amount of fuel, it just means those engines take longer to burn through the fuel. But you should, I think, and I'm, I, where I'm out of my depth here, I believe that you would be able, still be able to accomplish the same ultimate Delta V or close to it, and maybe more, because you're not, you don't have that extra mass. The danger of going to just one engine is you lose redundancy. If that one engine fails, the mission's over. If you have two engines and one engine fails, you can still go on. So I don't think you'd go down to one engine like I have in this diagram, but you certainly you could probably get down to two and still have viable missions. You need enough so you can lift yourself up off the ground. You need enough engines 
to get yourself up off the ground and accelerating to escape Earth's gravity. But once you're in orbit, then it's just a matter of accelerating and you don't have to accelerate fast. Once you're already in orbit and you're not falling back to the Earth, or at least not much, not falling much back to the Earth, just accelerating a little with one or two engines should be enough. And then you burn the fuel slower. Keep in mind, the engines have to push the fuel too. Until the fuel is gone, until you've used it, the engines have to push that too. But this would mean it would mean a longer, slower burn, a longer, slower period of thrust, but you would be pushing less overall weight because you're only because you've knocked off five or ten tons by getting rid of the extra engines. And that's a theory about how you could have a really long range mission with Starship by going down to two or one vacuum optimized. Elon mentioned stretching the tanks, and I wanted to give some idea of what that might look like. So in this image here, you can see the current rough idea of what the orbital launch Starship might look like, how bit much of the, the rocket, how much of the, the Starship the payload takes up. It's the upper third or so of the rocket. You have the fins on the orbital launch version because it's going to come back and land on Earth. And the bottom two thirds of the rocket is the CH4 tank, which is methane, and the O2 tank, which is oxygen. This is a rough approximation of how much each of those will take up in the rocket. The shapes and everything might be a little different. This is taken from a diagram I saw from SpaceX and I just modified it a little bit. You can see that for the Moon-Mars return mission that Elon talked about, you go down to a 40 ton payload. It allows you to shrink the payload section of the rocket and stretch the fuel section of the rocket so you can have more fuel. So that makes the CH4 tank, the methane tank bigger, it makes the oxygen tank bigger, and that means you can get more total thrust over the course of the mission because you're propelling less overall mass in the payload section. You are propelling a lot of mass of fuel, but over time the, the mass of the fuel diminishes because you're throwing it out the back of the rocket, and you end up with let's say an 80 ton structural ship and 40 tons of cargo and you have a lot less and you can make this work. My theory is that what Elon meant was you take off the fins to reduce mass and that's how you could possibly get down to an 80 ton ship. I'm not sure. And then the other picture here is the Explorer version I suggested where you have even less payload and it allows you to stretch the tanks even more. Before I move on, I don't want to forget to mention the tanker version of Starship. The tanker version's sole purpose is to carry fuel up into low Earth orbit, and then it will be able to refuel the version of Starship that we will be sending to the moon, to Mars, or beyond. So the tanker version has no payload, it's all fuel, just so you can see that. There's a couple more deviations or variations that I thought of if we're going to be penetrating deep space, then we should be deviant about it. On this diagram, you have the Earth launch version, you have the Moon-Mars return version with the fins, and you have the Explorer version with no fins, and it goes down to three engines. You can imagine a long-range Explorer version where you have a much, an even smaller amount of payload, even more stretched tanks, and now you're down to two Raptor engines instead of three. And then you can go even further and say, what if we did a robotic mission where we didn't need to have life support for humans, and then you had an extremely small payload because it's really just for computers and maybe cameras or something. I left the tip of the rocket, the nose, on. You might take that off to reduce mass. You've gotten rid of fins. You go down to one Raptor engine because now if you don't have any humans on the ship, if there's no particularly precious cargo on the ship, you might be more willing to take that risk that the engine's going to fail and you're going to lose the mission if your goal is to go particularly far. So this is just one more approach you could take within the current design of Starship being a certain height, how you can stretch the tanks by reducing the payload. Next, we're going to talk about what happens if you stretch Starship. And then stretch the tanks. Uh maybe 2,000 tons per pound. And you, then you, you, you could go to the surface of Mars and the surface of the moon and back. Yeah, no problem. I have to say that was really painful for me. 
because I didn't really understand what he meant when he said 2,000 tons. I don't think there's enough room in Starship to hold 2,000 tons of fuel. He said 2,000 tons per pound. I don't think that made sense either. And the guy who was doing the interview didn't ask a good follow-up question or any real question to clarify what he meant by that. In conversations I had after this interview, some people suggested he was talking about actually stretching the length of Starship, making it longer. I don't think that's unreasonable. There's something called the fineness ratio, which has to do with the height of the total rocket, Starship and Super Heavy on top of it, versus the diameter of the rocket, and has to do with the aerodynamics. You don't want your rocket too short and stubby, because when you're pushing up through the atmosphere, you're you're getting a lot of friction, and the friction doesn't really change the longer you make the rocket, or it doesn't change as much, so you have a benefit in making a rocket taller. And the fineness ratio on Falcon 9 is actually higher, meaning it's taller compared to its diameter, than the current Starship Super Heavy plan. So there is room within the fineness ratio to making Starship taller, and maybe making Super Heavy taller, so that you can have a taller rocket that you launch into space, and that would allow you to stretch the tanks and have more fuel, more payload as well, but if you're trying to do long-range missions, you could have smaller payload and a lot more fuel, even more fuel, because you've stretched the tanks further. So here's another design to get people pick on people who love rockets and say it's phallic. Well, if we want to penetrate deeper into virgin space, maybe we need a bigger rocket. And, you know, it used to be known as BFR for Big Effing Rocket. Well, we can stretch it and make it bigger so we can go deeper. So here's a few ideas of what a taller Starship might look like in terms of the additional fuel it would be able to carry relative to its payload. I've got the Explorer version, which goes on deeper space missions. You've got the, the Earth to Moon or Earth to Mars return trip mission where you just, again, by having making the rocket taller, you're able to have more fuel relative to the payload. And then you've got even a stretch tanker version, which would allow you to get more fuel up to refuel that mission rocket. You'd be able to get more fuel into the mission rocket in one trip. So that's an interesting concept. Is Elon thinking down the road they're going to make a taller Starship? It doesn't seem like that would be that hard to do. Rocket engineering is always hard. It doesn't seem like that's that much of a stretch to stretch the rocket. Add a few more steel rings. I'm sure there's some structural issues. I'm sure there's some engineering issues that go with it. But I could totally see that they would be able to pull that off. Okay, so now it's merch time. As you might have noticed during this video, I've been wearing shirts. I made Starship shirts with different ver variations of Starship. I'm sorry for those of you who are deviant. I didn't make a shirt with the extra long version to penetrate deeper. Maybe I'll do that next if I get a lot of feedback. But I've got them in multiple colors. Um, you've got the different kinds of variations of Starship I talked here. Look, this is for fun, but I think this is realistic. I think Elon really is going here, that we're going to see variations of Starship. It's a flexible platform. There's a lot we can do. Uh, we got colors, different colors. We got white on dark, white text on dark colors, and black text on light colors. It's a lot to see. So if you, if you think Starship is fun and you're interested in supporting this channel, please check below the description, and there should be some options that you can click right there to buy them or there'll be a link in the description to go to the store to look at all the different merch. I also have Elon Fan Club t-shirts that I think are really cool. And, you know, it's not just me. My, my family usually thinks I'm a geek and they don't think my stuff is good. And they actually think these shirts look pretty good. So check out the merch. Of course, please like this video. Please subscribe. And I've made a lot of other videos related to SpaceX. Check them out. Click on a video to watch. Learn more about Starship. Learn more about SpaceX. This is great. Let's have fun for the future. I'm really enthusiastic. I'm really excited. We're going to be able to go to Mars. Let's have some fun. Thanks for watching. Guess what just came in the mail?